What is up guys, here we have an Apple CarPlay and Android Auto unit for your vehicle. It's made by CarPod Go, it's a T3 60fps unit. Comes with the plug you need right here to get it all started and it's very simple to install this to your vehicle with the included mounting system. Comes with an OTG cable for updating your unit, a suction cup system right here for your mounting system, and some extra double sided tape right here to secure your screen to your dash. It's a really strong magnet behind this thing too, so it should be pretty stable wherever you mount it. Well, this thing, that's what it's supposed to do. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and it works pretty good. I'm obviously going to be showing the Android Auto side because I don't use Apple stuff, but this thing has some videos already out on it for Apple stuff, so most of them are already actually Apple videos for this one, so I'm just going to be doing the Android one because there's less of those on there for this guy. And I see a lot of people talking about one of the other versions of this that lags pretty well with Android Auto, but I think this version, they probably fixed that because mine doesn't really lag. It's uh, pretty acceptable and it does what it needs to do. For this Bluetooth adapter right here, that plugs into your aux cable and to power so you can actually transmit your phone Bluetooth to your radio if you don't have Bluetooth radio. So that's pretty cool. I'm not sure if that's included, but that was in the box. And you get a reverse camera as well. So. You know, you could use this as a reverse camera, you could use this as a front camera, any anywhere you really want to put it, just in case you already have a reverse camera. Maybe you have an off-road vehicle like me, you can put this in the front so you can see your approach angle to stuff. You know, when you're going uphill, you really can't see what you're about to hit. And this would be a good option. This is just an extra mount. It tells you right here in the instructions that I have upside down that you're just going to use this to put on your window or something, but you still have to lean this device on something because this is not meant to hold it up. This is just meant to place it in place and have something like a dashboard to lean on so that's gonna hold the weight of this device. Okay, so I'm gonna be setting this thing up in my Prius. Hopefully the audio is pretty good in here. I'm in my garage because it's hot out there and I'm gonna try to get this Prius turned on real quick after all plugging all this stuff in because it's getting warm in here now too in my garage. So I'm just gonna plug this in right here, excuse all the mess. So you can just have this plugged here and it'll still give you a USB output of five volt, 2.1 amps. So you just plug that into any spare auxiliary you have. There's an on and off switch right here, which you're probably just going to leave on once you have everything set up. Now I do have these magnets here, and I do plan to use these to actually mount this like so. So it's just going to look like a little cleaner install right here with a little wire just sticking out. Probably somewhere around here. And I think that'll look pretty good sitting right there. It'll just cover the knobs and I could just use the steering wheel controls anyway. That will actually work the way I'm going to be installing this into this Prius because I'm still going to be using my cell phone as the main connection to the car and this is just going to be pretty much a display and a touchscreen that you're going to be able to see your navigation and your, you know, audio. So I'm just going to place it right here for now on this magnet that's already here until I get some magnets back here on each side to mount onto these two. I'll show you guys when I'm done with all that, but for now for the demo, we're just going to use one of the magnets that's already here and mount this like so so we can see how it works. You can use this suction cup mount and a very strong magnet that goes behind this guy will definitely hold this in place. But remember, you still have to use your dash to support it. And there's another way you can do it, suction cup onto your window, but that's just so intrusive into your sight right here. And this is a smaller way to mount it, just in case you have a curved dash or anything. This right here curves, so you can hit those little curves if you have a curved dash like so. And it'll get that whole sticky part on there for a more secure connection. And that's how this mount assembles. And that's the same magnet that's for that right there that was on the back of that guy. You have your USB-C port for your power to plug this thing in to get this thing powered up. Your audio port, your AV in for your reverse camera or for wherever you want to put that camera. A mic and another USB right there. Now, like I said earlier, the best way to use this is as a display because if you do the Bluetooth through this, you're going to have some sort of lag and stuff. And if you don't want to deal with that, if your car already has Bluetooth and you're already connected to it with your phone, that's going to be your best bet is to use this as a display. Now, if you're using this for an older vehicle that does not even have Bluetooth, then you're going to have to use that Bluetooth dongle I showed earlier, which I'm not sure if that's included or not, but you can check the link in the description below. The listing will probably show you if that's included. Now, I know the price of this thing is pretty high, but supposedly this thing is a newer model. It's a lot faster. And from my testing on Android, a lot of people say the Android version is a lot slower when you're on Android where you're using Android Auto. My experience so far, not too bad with this, and the screen quality is pretty good. The screen protector is still on this guy, by the way. Power plugged in in the back. Oh, there you go, I already set it up to Toyota. I've already turned this on before. Oh, gotta turn it off before I get any copyright. 
Sorry, that's my AC turning on and my car's probably gonna turn on right now. There you go. Oh, I think it's because my Bluetooth device connected. It kind of cut my phone off from recording. It actually connected really fast. I'm not sure if it showed it on there, if it cut it off. If it did, I'm gonna redo it, obviously, but yeah, it's pretty quick. So all you have to do is just connect it to your Bluetooth like you connect everything else to your Bluetooth. You know, you go into the settings in here. That's the main screen. You're just gonna go to your Bluetooth right here. And then you're just gonna connect to whatever Bluetooth device you connect onto here. Just pretty much the same way you connect any Bluetooth device. And it's really quick, simple, like just like connecting into your car. And as you can tell, mine just goes straight back into this mode because it knows it's already set up. And as you can see, it has my Spotify on there showing you the recent music I've been listening to. And it shows you the recent restaurants I've been to. Yep. Pretty decent right there. Nice screen quality too. I'm not sure if my phone is conveying that properly. But you have all your options right here for calling. Then you have your Amazon Music. You click on that one. If I want to switch from Amazon to Spotify. And you can configure what's on the side here too. So you can toggle to all the apps that are available to you while using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And you have more settings in here. So you can switch where you want your you know, map to be and you want your music player to be. Since this car right here has audio controls and I'm using my phone to connect to the car, I'm just going to use it that way. And I'm going to use the you know, main screen right here. I'm going to have the audio on this side for the passenger to toggle. I just clicked on some music, so I'm going to have to probably pause this or mute this. I have a pretty big bezel at the bottom here. Smaller one at the top. But it doesn't seem to bother me, you know, it, it looks pretty good. And once I have it mounted exactly where I want it, which I'll show you guys in a second once I have it mounted on here, I think it's going to look pretty nice. So yeah, very simple, and obviously you mount your camera where you want to mount it. I don't have it mounted, but I'll plug it in right now so we can see what that looks like. You connect the wires like so. plug into the back like so oh, so I believe that's actually the power for the camera so you're gonna have to hit power with that some sort of 12 volt so that way you can power on the camera or you can tap into the reverse light to get that to come on but I'm not gonna tap into anything right now because I don't need the reverse camera on this car but anyway that's just how easy that is to hook up pretty much a power source is all you need simple enough and they give you a long enough wire to do that with you could run that all the way to the trunk to the front wherever you want that camera you can even have it as an interior camera if you want but you are gonna have to power it up so I'm actually recording with my phone right now. This is going to be a multitask for my phone because it's connected to this thing and everything. So let's go ahead and see if we can make it navigate to somewhere while I'm connected to it with my phone and recording with my phone. Going to search. Uh, we'll just go to here where I was a couple hours ago. And I can press start. Check that out. That's pretty quick. And I'm using my phone to record this video right now that you're watching, and this is all connected to Your my phone. Your route may be affected by flash flood warning. Ooh, flash flood warnings. Water up there. It's raining up there, huh? You can switch from day mode to night mode by swiping down on the screen, and switch back by swiping down on the screen again. Simple enough. You can go back to exit, and then click on this to switch, just in case you're trying to connect to CarPlay. So it's trying to find some sort of car play now, which it's not going to find. So this is the final installation right here. It looks pretty clean, right? I just have magnets back here holding it. That's over my radio. I have my radio screen. You could actually turn it off, which is pretty cool in the Prius. So now I just have this screen on right here, and it's going to connect to, you know, your phone. Well, there you go. Looks pretty cool. Looks like it belongs there. Even from way back here, it looks pretty cool. Just that one wire sticking out. Doesn't bother me too much. And now it looks a little updated. And in my opinion, the Android Auto works fast enough. It's not jittery or anything like some of the other ones people say are not that great for these kind of devices. But I mean, you know, there's other ways to do this. Like I've been doing a tablet on this. That's why I have these mounts right here. I have a pretty big 17 inch tablet that sits on here. I believe you could listen to YouTube and stuff on here. And it's just going to be playing on your phone as well in the background. Oh, my car turned back on. Well, there you go, guys. Another cool device right here. You know, sorry, it's not RC related, but it is something I'm really interested in because, you know, I do want to have a little bit more ways to connect to my car easily. So that way I can get to my RC off-roading spots and, you know, RC trails with my Prius. Obviously, I don't off-road this car. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. As usual, and as always, stay safe out there. Go have fun. 
and install Bluetooth devices in your ride. <laughs>